Okay, so let's begin in class. So we're talking about ethics program. So in the last class we uh, discussed what is an ethics program and why we want to have an ethics program. So what is the goal? So we can say that. We want to allow individuals to overcome barriers that stop them from acting in an ethical way. Encourage the people to act in an ethical way. Take away the barriers. So we want to make a program which is going to allow those things to happen. <clears throat> so we want our workers also to become ethical. We want to make a program that uh, allows them to be ethical, and we also want them to become ethical. So, how can we become an ethical person? Are you an ethical person? Yes. You are? Yes. How did you become an ethical person? What did you say? Uh, read more philosophy books. You read a lot of philosophy books? What philosophy books did you read? <laughs> <laughs> Buddhism? Buddhism? Some Buddhist philosophy books? What does the Buddhism religion say? Uh, Ethical <laughs> behavior is? Don't take other people's things or don't touch their things without their permission. Is there like rules or code? Some code list of things don't do? Like in the Christian religion they have ten commandments. I'm asking because unfortunately I don't know the details of the Buddhist religion. Is there like a list of rules? Yes, yes, list of rules. Mm. You should follow. Don't kill though any. Don't kill. Also in the Ten Commandments. Yes. Okay, so you read about Buddhist philosophy. If you're a Christian, you could say that you studied the Bible, or some people might say they studied about Immanuel Kant's idea about philosophy, or Aristotle's idea, right? So they, they are kind of like ethical people, okay? Do you think that even if you're an ethical person, if you went to work in Enron, at the time the culture was from the leader down, the culture was one of uh, greed, and uh, arrogance and not respecting the laws, just taking a lot of risk and making a lot of profit. Do you think you could be changed? Yes. You could be changed in the culture inside the company? Okay, so we can see the problem. Okay, we want the company to be set up correctly so people can, even if they're ethical, they can stay ethical, right? And then on the other hand, we have people who are not ethical. Maybe, so we want them to be ethical, okay? So we've all seen exam there are many examples of people, individuals who acted in an unethical way. So we're, we, this is talking about your reading. Reading is exercise for the mind. So we can read and find out, exercise our mind in order to know what ethics requires. And we also need some character traits to be a person who acts on ethical obligations. It may be something that I know what's right. For example, in the last class we discussed that those, uh, that those two guys are hitting this guy, right? And then we are five guys, 
So we should save the guy who's been hit by the two guys, right? It's illegal to hit the people or damage the people like that. So we know that it's the right thing to do to help him, but there could be some character traits, like we're cowards. Do you understand coward? Yes. We're cowards, that we don't help. Another reason that we don't help, even though we know, you studied, and you know that it's the right thing to do is to help him, you could have some flaw in your character. You could be a coward, right? So you say, oh, I don't want to. I could get hit. I'm not going to help, okay? So we, we need to do both of these things. We need to know, have an ethical foundation, and also develop our character so that we know that we can act when we have to act, okay? So ethics is not just applying rules, but also transforming ourselves and our behavior to reflect the higher ideals about what is right. So I know that you are taking a bribe, but I know that's wrong, but I don't say anything, right? Then I'm missing something. So I also have to have the action that I should report to the company that she was taking a bribe, okay? So what does Aristotle think? So let's look at Aristotle's idea about ethics. So people, what do people want? People want friends, family, working, getting money, being proud of what they accomplished, having a sense of self-worth, being entertained, and being on the side of what is just or what is right. Did you ever hear about Maslow's hierarchy of needs? It's a psychology. Uh, Maslow's, yes. Five, five yes. What kind of tells? <coughs> First step is basic step. Pete. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> basic step is feed the meal. House. Shelter. Shelter. Food, shelter, clothing. Then moves up. What's at the top? <coughs> so we can see some things here, right? It's in the middle, like uh, being successful at work, right? Yes. Being liked by everybody, right? So we can see that. One time, I read a book about, uh, about a guy who went to the prison camp in Siberia. The prison camp in Siberia under Stalin was not a very happy place, right? He had to uh, work very hard every day, and he didn't get much food, it was very cold. So one day he got a, some potato in his soup. One extra potato by accident. So he was happy all day. Really happy doing all the hard work in the cold weather, cleaning the fish, because he got an extra potato by accident in his soup, right? Well, sometimes when I'm flicking through the stations, I see the MTV Suite 16 in Los Angeles, California. Some girl whose father is a rapper, he's a millionaire, and uh, she's having her Suite 16 birthday party. Have you seen that program on MTV? They show the birthday party of the daughters of the famous people, right? But she wanted to go in the helicopter, but she couldn't go in the helicopter. Her father didn't let her, so she was really sad all day. <laughs> <laughs> so this is kind of like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? The guy in Russia was really happy, but this millionaire girl was really sad all day because her father didn't let her get a helicopter for her birthday, or go in the helicopter, right? So. People uh, at different levels, different things make people happy, okay? And <clears throat> by the way, if you, if you live in, if you go to live in a third world country, right? Then maybe when you come back to Korea, you can feel happier about your own situation, right? Generally. So we have uh, all of these things that Aristotle says makes us happy, and according to Maslow, 
it's a hierarchy, right? If I have this and this and this, then I usually we want more, right? So anyway, excessively focusing on work and money may inhibit our ability to maintain meaningful relationships, which is greed. So if people are greedy, then we cannot have some good relationships with other people, according to Aristotle. We're too greedy. Vice, a vice is a failing of excellence, and a virtue is a balanced character trait. So when Aristotle talks about vice and virtue, virtue, he's talking about balance, right? Not too much or not too little. For example, honesty. Is honesty a good thing? Yes. Can you have too much honesty? Do we need to have balanced honesty? Is there such a thing as being too honest? Yes, can you give me an example? Mm, but I come to a different country and I'm surprised about the culture. Mm. Maybe some things I don't agree with. I just keep for myself and I don't say to people. Okay. Alright. What if somebody comes to your house with a gun and they say, I'm looking for your brother. Where is he? Is honesty a good thing? Do you tell him, he's just in bed. You're lucky. He just came back, he's in bed. You can go up. Up you go. Right? Or do you say, I don't know. I don't know where he is. What are you going to say? Hmm? What are you going to say if somebody comes to your house with a gun looking for your brother? Are you going to tell them where he is? Or not? No, right? So, according to Aristotle, virtue is balanced. Balanced. Not too much or not too little of something. So virtuous people rationally assess situations, react appropriately, learn from their mistakes and develop their character. So one way of developing characters, learning from our mistakes. Okay, for example, if they give away money, they would give it to the right person at the right time in the right amount. So people would say charity or giving away your money is a nice thing, right? But again, Aristotle would say, that I shouldn't just give all my money to him, okay? That's not the right way to give away my money. Charity might be a nice thing, but I'm not doing it in a balanced way, okay? There are people who need money more than him, okay? Or places where my money can make more of a difference. So I would give it away to the right person, maybe to the charity organization which is helping orphans, right? And the right amount, I don't give them too little or uh, too much. So we don't let our emotions cloud our moral vision. It's a feeling of balance. So if we look at this, we can have three things. We can have excess, we can have the virtue, which is the best one, and the vice, which is the worst one. Do you understand excess? What does excess mean? Excess means too much. Too much. Right, so if we look across here, the virtue is courage. Okay, what's the vice? <coughs> Cowardly, right? So what is too much? Recklessness. So this was important in ancient Greece. Okay? They had some heroes like Achilles and so on, right? But Achilles was not reckless. He didn't run into the opposite army with no armor, just his sword. Right? That's not courageous. That's just reckless. He's going to be killed. Okay? That's too much. But he wasn't a coward. If he had to fight, then he had, he had to fight, right? So the right one they thought was courage. Next one. Gluttony. Moderation and abstinence. Gluttony means eating or drinking too much. Doing something too much. A glutton. It's kind of old English word. Okay. Uh, moderation. Don't drink too much. Don't drink too little. Abstinence. Perhaps they were looking at the Sparta. Do you know Sparta? Yes. In Sparta, they have complete abstinence of, from everything, almost. One of the strictest lives in the world, right? They hardly, they only ate very plain food with no taste. Three times a day, the same kind of food. They didn't drink, right? They did a lot of training all the time. 
uh, they were separated from their children at a young age. But he thinks that's vice. Why he thinks it should be in moderation. Then wasting money, generous or stingy. So I just give money to you, all my money to you, I'm just wasting money, right? I give money, generous, sorry I, I don't mean, maybe you'll do something good with the money. But. <laughs> right, I'm generous, I give <coughs> money to charity, maybe 10% of my income or something like that, that's a generous person, right? And then stingy, I don't give money ever to anybody, keep all my money to myself. So this is Aristotle's balanced view of ethics, right? Aristotle is saying we have an excess and a vice. And he's looking at this one sums up the best, right? Moderation. This kind of thing. So, uh, <laughs> we have to do the right judgment and action. So, for example, we need both learning and habitual action. So if I study about the bike, I buy a book about bikes. Do you understand bike? Bicycle, right? Can you ride a bicycle? Yes. Some people can't, some people can't. Right? Do you think that you could just read a book about riding bicycles and study everything about riding the bicycle? No. In exactly, watch a YouTube video, and then you're able to ride a bicycle? No. No, why not? Okay, so a similar thing he's saying with <coughs> learning about right judgment and action. You can learn about it, you said you read a book, right? You can learn about it, but you also need to have habitual action. So like just like snowboarding or skiing, I watched the video on YouTube beforehand, but when I try to do it, I can't do it, right? I have to practice. Practice the snowboarding and then I can do it. So for example, lead leadership skill. Leading, leading is also practice. Practice makes you better. So you could read about leading, but you need to practice. So if you have some group work, maybe you can volunteer to be the leader or the facilitator to get some practice, okay? So for example, relate this to the company's business ethics. We know that, or we can learn that, don't exploit children. Exploit means take advantage of. So hire children, why? Because we can pay them less money. Right? We can make more profit. Against, how should we structure our supply chain to prevent exploiting children? So we know that we shouldn't exploit children, but we have to make some policy. Okay, we have to change our supply chain structure. So we suggested in the last class sending somebody there to check every month or every two months. Okay? So just intellectual knowledge is not going to help us to solve this problem. So we saw, we said, some business people fail to act even though they know what is ethical. So we require knowledge, we require practical experience, and then on top of that, we need correct character traits. So we should make a culture, organizational pra practices, and other conditions to support this environment. So we're talking about in the company, we understand that we need knowledge, practical experience, and the correct character. So we want people in our company all to be ethical. So we want to make this kind of way. So that's what we're going to talk about, right? So first of all, we can make uh, values. Values for our company, right? So this is a company from the US, BB and T. And they made their values. So they said that when they, even when they hire people, they look for people who have their values. So one way, another good idea when you're going for an interview, try and find the mission, or if you can't find the values of the company, and then they, the person who's doing the interview should be looking for somebody who has the same values as the company. So if you can say that you have those kind of values, then they'll tick the box, right? Oh, good fit for our company, okay? So, what values does B, B and T look for? They look for reality, reason, independent thinking, productivity, honesty,
Do you understand these words? Yes? Honesty, are you honest? Yes. Are you productive? Can you think independently? Yes. Can you, do you use reason or just emotion? Yes. Right, that kind of thing. Do you live in the real world? <coughs> Integrity, justice, pride, self-esteem, teamwork. So we can see a lot of companies will look for teamwork. They will look for independent thinking, honesty, productivity, right? They could be quite similar. But the important thing is that the company is making its values known to all its employees. This is the kind of person that we're looking for, or the way we want people to be in our company. Okay, so <clears throat> then we get in, first of all we set out the values that we want. Then we get into designing the program. And we want to design some process. You understand process? What's another word for process in English? Process is important when we're talking about business ethics and ethical programs. Steps. Steps. Systems, right? You understand system? System we also use in Korean. Define a system or a process for continual moral and intellectual development. So, first of all, we have to look at the difference between legal and ethical. We have compliance programs and ethics programs. Compliance program means keeping the law. Comply means comply with the law. Don't break the law. So compliance is checking that the rules of, uh, are we keeping the rules, right? So a company should have a program to make sure that they are keeping the law, they are following the law. For example, our accounts are audited. So if we audit our accounts, then that's like complying with the law. So compliance is rule definition, what is the rule, understanding the rule. If somebody breaks the rule, detect and punish them. So could you give me an example of what you think is some kind of compliance where we could have a rule, detection and punishment in a company? In the university, what kind of rule, detection and punishment do you have? students, right? Yes. Then he was found out. How did they find out? They must have some system for detection. What kind of system did they have? Just reporting? Somebody can report to his boss, something like that, right? Yes. Information system. And then punishment, he loses his job, okay? So this is, uh, we don't want to confuse the compliance with the ethical system, right? Compliance is to do with the law, breaking the law, okay? So that kind of thing is not just unethical, it's illegal, right? So uh, ethics is incentivizing ethical behavior, encouraging active executive leadership and support, and ethics training. <coughs> so these are the kind of things we want to do. So <coughs> the US federal sentencing guidelines, they have a connection between well-defined, shared, and culturally embedded organizational values and ethical commitments and lawful conduct. So large organizations should help small organizations to implement their effective compliance and ethics programs, even in other countries. So we talked about Nike and their suppliers. So the larger organization can help the uh, smaller one. And they, for example, we can give them guideline, we can give them a book, which is a guideline for uh, instructing how to do that, even if we don't send somebody there. <coughs> so, 
this is the International Organization for Standardization, so a quality oriented approach to management systems. So leadership creates, this should say, an, an environment where stakeholders are involved in organizational change and provide a clear and inclusive uh, vision of the company's future. So goals are best achieved when persons and resources are managed within clearly established organizational processes. Processes are a part of a management system. There is a commitment to continual improvement. There is a plan, do, measure, improvement cycle. So, uh, this is just a general way to make, uh, we're talking about processes or system, right? So we want to get a quality kind of management system. So we're going to talk to the stakeholders, right? And we are going to uh, make clear processes. Okay? Processes are going to be part of a management system. So we make the process about the interview. It's linked up in the organization to another manager and another manager. Okay? Then uh, we always want to improve. So even though we have this process, which is there should be one woman always on the interview board, right? We should still be looking for how can we improve? How can we make our interviews more uh, or uh, gender equal? Okay, and then plan, do, measure, improvement cycle. So I make the plan. I decide there will be a woman sitting in on every interview. Okay, then we do this, and then we measure it. Did it make any difference in the end? Okay, so this is plan, do, measure. We make the plan, we do it. But it's no good just to make the plan and do it. We have to measure at the end. Is, is our company hiring more in a more equal way since we started this policy? Okay. Is it a useful policy? And so on. So, <clears throat> first of all, when we start our ethics program, we can think about these things, right? First of all, we have to make our objectives. So clear expectations and objectives. We have to remember that uh, our actions should be responsible, accountable, process and systems oriented. Do you understand oriented? Yes. What does oriented mean? Oriented means like related to, related to, right? So always related to process and system. <coughs> Accountable means that uh, somebody has to answer for something. So I've noticed this is important in management. If people are not accountable, then we could have a problem. Okay? So let me give you an example. I ask you, I just ask any of you guys, no, it doesn't matter who. I ask any of you guys uh, to watch the camera when I go out of the room, right? And then I come back and the camera is taken. It's not here. I just asked the class, right? So nobody felt responsible because I asked all of the room, right? So nobody thought I'm responsible for that, so you weren't watching. But how about I ask you? I said, check when I go out of the room that the camera, nobody takes the camera, right? Then when I come back, camera is still here. Why? He was watching the camera, okay? If I tell everybody, nobody's watching the camera. So this is a kind of a management tip, right? If you give a task, you have to make somebody accountable. If you make everybody accountable, then some people will say it's not my must mean him or must mean somebody else, right? Not for me. So if we make people accountable, it's clear. This is one problem in meetings. People go to the meeting and then they decide like, yes, we have to do this, right? So we have to finish this report by next Thursday. Great, okay, bye. Right? So they come back next Thursday. 
or next Wednesday night they start emailing each other. Right? Then it's nobody's done anything, it's too late. Okay? Then on Thursday, I thought you were going to do it. Why didn't you do it? No, you, she was got she said she was going to do it. Right? So she didn't give me her part, so I couldn't do it, right? So we have to make people accountable. How could what could we do at the meeting to make people accountable in that case? What could we do in the meeting? What would be a tip to make people accountable? Right, we make an agenda. We make action point at the end of the meeting. Action point. She is going to do the job by Wednesday. It's written down on the email. Okay? Then she doesn't finish by Wednesday. You can't just say, oh, but I thought she was going to finish by Wednesday. It's written on the email. Okay? There's no argument. You write on the email, you're going to finish by Thursday. So this is a kind of process in the meeting where I'm making you accountable, and I'm making you accountable. So also when we make these kind of processes or programs, we should make people accountable. I ask, I say to somebody, right, we should have, we have a meeting, and I say, we should have one woman sitting on every interview. And then we all go home. And then the next day there's three men at the interview, and no women. Right? But I didn't make anybody accountable. So I have to say, John, that's your job. You have to make sure that when we have an interview, there's one woman at least on the board. If there's not one woman on the board, I'm going to talk to you, John. Right? You are accountable for that. Then, as I explained, this is my experience in real life, it happens like that. If you don't make people accountable, it's quite possible that they won't do it. Okay? But if you do make people accountable, then they do do it. So, account accountable is an important word for real life, right? Then we need to have some way of measuring and assessing. So how, how are we going to measure if I make this process of having one woman at least at every interview? How are we going to measure this, this uh, process? and assess it. Did it work? Was it a good idea or not? What number would you suggest, or how would you suggest that I measure the success of this program, or process? What's the problem I'm trying to solve by having a woman, at least one woman, at every interview? So we're trying to solve the problem of discrimination, right? When hiring people. So we could look at, for example, the percentage. Percentage of people who applied for the job. What percentage were male, what percentage were female, right? So if we see something very strange like uh, 50, it was 50% females and 50% males applied for the job, but the people who got the job was 90% males and 10% female, then that just looks a bit strange, right? So we can look, find some way of measuring. Is this process changing the, the percentage and so on? And systematic means across the company and continually, continually having a commitment to becoming ethically. So, <coughs> documentation is a kind of a little bit more boring part of ethics, making the documents, right? But documents is important. Uh, for example, when I was working in my last job, I was not allowed to drive in the car together with a child, right? Just me and one child together in the car. But maybe I wouldn't have known about that, except it was written down in the code of ethics or code of conduct, right? So when I started the job, I got the document, the code of ethics, code of conduct, I saw the person should never be in the car by themselves with a child. There should always be at least two childs or another adult, right? So then I know not to uh, get in just one child in the car together, okay? So we have, even though I should know that myself, it's probably not a good idea, right? But if we have the documentation, it's important. And we should make 
this kind of code of conduct, right? Do you understand? Code of conduct, code of behavior, how you should behave, and give it to our employees to read. You mentioned about some sexual harassment in the Seoul University, right? Very often, if you join a company, you have to take a course about that on the first day, right? So they give you a course, like an online course, or you have to take a small test, or something about what is okay and what's not okay, right? So you will put in the test. Do you think this is okay, right? Then you click yes, but it's not okay, right? So you're learning that you shouldn't do that kind of thing, right? So we make this sort of documentation, and we talk to our stakeholders about that. So we want to make an ethics vision statement. So we saw that for B, B and T, they had their values. So we need to have this at the very top, right? If we're making an ethics program, at the top we're going to have a vision statement. It's a little bit like in a company, we have a mission statement at the top. What do we uh, want our company to be? So, everybody has a different idea. Even religions have a different idea. So, our, every company is going to have a different idea about what values they want, right? What conduct they want. So, anyway, we can make, if we make a company, we should make our own ethics, vision, or values, right? Do you want to make your own religion? Do you want to make your own religion? No? You can make your own religion with the ethics, right? The way people should act, okay? But in your company, you're not making a religion, right? Just in your company, you're saying that people should act like this. We want people like this. Okay? To act in this way. Can a company say that uh, they are just following the religion? There was some same, famous case in uh, the UK where a woman from British Airways was wearing a cross to work and her boss told her, you're not allowed to wear the cross at work. And she refused and then she got fired. So you can see that the workplace, we're not, we can't really say that it's not possible to discriminate on religion, right? Or say we're only hiring Christians or Buddhists or so on. So we can't say that just our company is just the same as religion, right? Because there could be people from different religions working in our company. So we have to make an ethics vision so that the people who are working in our company are following the same, whether they're agnostic, they don't have any religion, whether they have follow some philosopher's ideas, or they follow different religions, right? Anyway, we need to have them all working on the same page in our company. Same kind of ethics. So we need to make this vision statement. So, uh, our long-term success is linked to ethical and legal conduct. So if we are an ethical company and we follow the law, we are long more successful in the long term than companies which don't. <coughs> You might, by unethical behavior, you might do better in the short term, but all studies have pointed that socially responsible and ethical companies less risk in the longer term, because they build trust and relationship with the communities and other companies. So, we have in our vision statement, we have to think about our stakeholders. For example, product quality and safety. So, we should have something here which is going to make sure that our product quality and safety is going to be okay, right? Maybe honesty. Honesty. We're not going to lie about what's in our product, right? Character, tra character traits, such as honesty. Uh, executive commitment to ethics program. So in this statement, we can say that uh, the CEO, the, ethics, the CEO is supervising the ethics program, right? <coughs> Uh, framework for developing more specific objectives. So we can go into a little bit more detail about more objectives. And then we should mention our other documents, like the code of conduct. So we're giving our kind of values and character traits 
what we want. We're also telling people we have this kind of documentation and we have this kind of framework. So let's have a look at one exa example. We also want to link the people to some higher, higher idea. So this is a values and ethics <coughs> statement from TI, right? So I don't know if you can see, it's a little bit... So, this is uh, ethics, values and ethics statement. Right? They have this on their web page. So, our reputation at TI, so it's a statement, right? It's like two paragraphs. Okay? So, I want, as I read this, I want you to write down some words which you think are important, right? So, our reputation at TI depends upon all of the decisions we make and all the actions we take personally each day. Our values define how we will evaluate our decisions and actions and how we will conduct our business. We are working in a difficult, demanding, ever-changing business environment. Together, we are building a work environment on the foundation of integrity, innovation, and commitment. Together, we are moving our company into a new century, one good decision at a time. Our high standards have rewarded us with an enviable reputation in today's marketplace, a reputation of integrity, honesty, and trustworthiness. That strong ethical reputation is a vital asset, and each of us shares a personal responsibility to protect, preserve, and enhance it. Our reputation is strong, but is a strong but silent partner in all business relationships. By understanding and applying the values presented here, each of us can say to ourselves and others, TEI is a good company, and one reason is that I am part of it. Know what's right, value what's right, do what's right. Okay? So what words do you think are important? That what do you think is the values of this company? Important values for this company? Honesty. Honesty, we saw honesty, yes. Trust, trust. Trustworthiness, what does that mean? Trust. If I'm a trustworthy person, what does it mean? Worthy to trust. Yes, what does that mean? <laughs> I can trust you. You can trust me, right? <laughs> Integrity, do you understand integrity? They also mentioned, we can see innovation. They want to innovate people in their company. If you're going to go for a job interview for TI, what are you going to tell them about yourself? They ask you, tell me about yourself. First sentence, well, I like to think I'm, I have integrity, I'm innovative, I'm commitment to the job. Then, I'm very, my friends say I'm very trustworthy and honest. Right? Not so obvious, right? Then they'll get really excited. Oh, you're perfect! Perfect for the job! You're hired! Straight away! Right? Welcome to the company. Would you like to work for this kind of company? Yes? Okay. So, do you believe this? Do you believe this? Hmm? Yes? Little companies really like this, but anyway, we have to try, right? We have to, from the top down, we have to try. We have to make a vision statement, and then after this, we need to to move on and, and uh, try to make sure that this is being done. But for anything, if people have worked together, we need a common vision. Otherwise, we are not going to be successful. So I already explained the situation of ancient Rome, where Rome had no experience in the sea, no experience with the navy, but one guy got everybody together and they all had the same vision. Their vision was, let's make a navy, right? To protect Rome and Sicily. So because everybody was working together under the same vision and a very good leader, they were able to succeed, 
right? So it's important to have a vision. So everybody knows they're working together on the same, do you understand on the same page? Be on the same page in English means uh, people are thinking in, in the same direction, right? They're moving together. So uh, next we can have our code, we have to make our code of conduct. So what should this uh, contain? After our vision statement, we make a code of conduct. We have our values, but we decide our values, we can put them into the vision statement. Then code of conduct. So we state the executive commitment to promoting edits. So the very start of our code of conduct is, this is coming from the CEO, right? It's coming from the top. So when people read that, they know it's important. Clearly spell out duties and obligations. So I gave you the example that if you are working with kids, in any way, you shouldn't be alone with a child in the car, right? Just you and the kid in the car, it's not allowed to happen like that. So this needs to be clearly spelled out, right? It's not vague, it doesn't say, uh, it's not a good idea to be alone with kids. It says clearly, you should not be in the car with one kid, okay? You sh if you're in the car, you should have two kids, or at least one kid and one adult. So this is, the code is, is a little bit more in detail, right? Depending on the job you're doing. So, highlights fundamental rights, not against discrimination, right? For example, is a fundamental right. Uh, so don't make any racist comments, that kind of thing. Special obligations and legal compliance. Then related to the job functions. So, if you're working with kids, you have this one, right? Another one is sales and marketing. You have to be honest, right? So clearly say, what is dishonest advertising? Okay. Uh, you can also get help from the professional groups. If there's a professional group about marketing, there can be, you can find out the information there about what marketers should and shouldn't do and add it to your code of conduct. Use examples of how to solve common issues. So if my problem is that the kids, everybody's gone to the football game. There's one kid left. I need to take him to the football game. But there's only me in my car, right? Then it gives an example of how to solve this issue, right? Maybe just uh, call somebody else, right? Or uh, <coughs> ask the kid's parents to pick to bring him to the game, right? That kind of thing. So. Let's take a break now for 10 minutes. <clears throat>